Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to the fishes that are called Pisces. Hi, Pisces. I made a little adjustment to that old crooning goldie oldie just for you guys. I did it all by myself. But anyways, I want to put a smile on your face and thank you for being here in this moment in space and time and joining me uh, at this little YouTube channel for this, your mid-May general reading for Pisces. That could be sun, moon, ascendant in Pisces or somebody that you love that you're checking this uh, Piscean video for. How are you guys doing? I want to wish you all the best in abundance, joy, bliss, material success, uh, and emotional fulfillment at this time. It's always my intention for these readings. Um, and I also wanted to say uh, thank you guys for uh, all your support, your views, your likes, your thumbs up, your thumbs down. As always, you know that your comments mean so much to me. And I want to let you know, I'm kind of reaching a point where it's like, Thanks to you guys all checking this out and commenting. I'm running out of time to respond to all comments, but I'm, I, I want you to know that I read them all. And I'm going to do that by giving them all a little thumbs up or a little uh, heart there. Speaking of heart, we've had the lovers and the page of cups flip out. That's pretty significant. See, these two come out together. So uh, somebody in Pisces, definitely there's the emotional side of your water element coming out here and trying to define a certain situation where trust may be a factor and uh, intimacy is definitely at play here. My subscribers know I take flippers and poppers at face value. I pop them back into the deck and that's where we go. So again, with the comments, if there's anything else you guys want to see, like any other topics you want video blogging done on, just let me know in the comments or anything you agree with or doesn't sit well with you, I take comments, good, the bad, and the ugly. I, I really enjoy them. It, what, it's what gives me the drive to keep doing this. I could not do these readings if you guys didn't watch them, right? This makes sense. Right? It's here in the middle for you guys. Okay, Pisces. Um, so at this point in time, please set your intention uh, for this reading, and we'll get the cards into place here, and we'll have a look at our seven major areas uh, to help reveal any hidden energies, uh, any stuck energies, and any healing messages that tear them. Three of Wands at the bottom of the deck. I swear to God, I cannot make this stuff up. Three of Wands has been showing up for, I don't know, over 50% of the signs, or at least over half of the signs. It's getting to the point where I'm wanting to take this card and speak to the entire collective. And I may just do a video of that, like talking about what Three of Wands is all about. Three of Wands now is up in your overall energy, okay? And Three of Wands, uh, the, the card at the bottom of the deck, I'll explain. I always take it face up because I do read reversals, but the card at the bottom of the deck remains fluid. And for me as a reader, it's just the way I do it. If you don't like it, here's some eggs. You know what you can go and do with them, right? So that stated, Three of Wands up in the overall energy to me means a long and arduous, potentially arduous road ahead. Uh, it is a point in time where your decision, you're making a decision to embark upon a journey that is following, has the potential to be, to lead to a future dream, a future goal, a future situation where you would like to see yourself maybe five years, maybe 10 years from now, maybe not even that far from now, maybe only three or four weeks from now, you would like to see yourself there. But we're in a position where we're questioning whether or not to take the first steps on that journey because as you can see from this card the road is like straight down and rocky and then where do you go from there it's like there is we can't see that far ahead right now it's almost like we're not even meant to know and for me the three of wands is uh, comes back to the, the proverbial F word, and that word is forgiveness. There could be situations that some of you are dealing with where there could be certain disharmonies or certain distance that has been created, maybe from triangulated relationships, or maybe just space and time has gotten in the way and pursuing different goals where like some forgiveness and some uh, reconnection is required at this time in order to feel closure, conclusion, effective uh, forgiveness at this point in time, okay? Okay. Um, 
because if we start on this this journey, it's almost like we're needing to commit 100% right away. And that's tough for very many people to do that. It's like you're going to have to go down to the water and then you're going to have to build a boat. And then you're going to have to like travel across the entire sea. And you're not even really sure that what is at the other end is still really what you're wanting. Maybe everything that you need is right there in front of you. And it's kind of like uh, chasing fantasies at present time, right? That sort of situation. So three of wands is making sure you guys know what it is that's important being right within and moving forward with confidence only when you're at a place where you are feeling strong healthy sound enough to do so i swear to god pisces i've seen this three of wands so many times in the last two or three days that i've been doing these readings for everybody that i just like Right now, it feels like Muhammad Ali is just punching me in the gut, and he's showing me this card every time he does it. Like, I don't know what's abound for everybody. I think maybe we're seeing where situations, a lot of people need to come to terms with not holding grudges uh, anymore, okay? And maybe the sun in Taurus that's moving into Gemini, maybe as the sun moves into Gemini, that's what we're looking at wanting to soften any kind of begrudging energy that we have, okay? That sort of thing. All right, let's go back to our root chakra. Let's see what's going up on the day-to-day. -day. You guys got five of cups. What's going on, Pisces? We had page of cups. We had the lover. Now we had the five of cups. Are some of you literally like kind of pretty sad about where your love life is right now? Are some of you pretty sad that you may have chosen to date Ricky instead of Johnny or Susie instead of Jenny? Is there certain regrets that you know like... Uh, Maybe some somebody had a real deep crush on you and they, you knew they were a good person, but you chose some instant gratification for some other trait that you knew was just a little bit more superficial, but your heart is really crying out to like be with this other person that might still be in your environment, okay? That's what I get in this sense is almost as like you are kind of like not seeing the person that is truly like uh, smitten with you, but you that person is like, it, 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 maybe they're not in your league. Maybe you think, oh, well, that person isn't tall enough or that person isn't slender enough or that. And it's not really shallow, but it just might be what be is bound. Like you may need to let somebody down gently. You just say like, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. That kind of thing. And that's fine, right? Uh, if you're needing to be there on that sort of level. But Pisces, you guys are so awesome and you are very attractive. I, I feel that Pisceans carry this very attractive emotional energy with them wherever they go. People feel uplifted and enlightened when you're in a good mood. And if you're in a bad mood, it can really affect the people around you. So to see this in a root chakra in the grounding level, let's make sure when we're we're getting ready to go out into the world, whether that's your day at work or out to an event or a social type setting, that your mood does have the potential to affect the energies around you. And there are certain other signs or other people are out there that will be affected by that, uh, certainly and most for sure. So um, if you guys are feeling down in the dumps, I would recommend maybe... Uh, you know, kind of keeping to yourself a little bit. Um, if you are feeling uh, outwardly uh, happy and generous and giddy at this time, be sure to share it because this card could go either way. It's showing like, you know, um, there could be some situations that are causing you to be moody even. Um, and it's not like uh, unfair, but it's like, you know, your mood is a reflection of your feelings and your feelings are a reflection of your thoughts and your thoughts are a reflection of what you are perceiving in your environment. And eventually, and it goes back, you are the one that creates your environment, are you not? So you are in control of that. So just see how that process takes place and being very much aware of it. You don't have to always be in the forefront of your mind, but if you see like someone's giving you, um, mean mugging you or straight facing you or has like resting bitch face at you all the time it's just like maybe just know that there is like a mirroring effect that's going on there it might be because you're in a bad mood or it's because that person isn't strong enough to like uh, break the ice or bridge the gap and say oh hey how how was your weekend how are you today right you might have to take the high road and be the one doing that in certain situations okay five of cups and grounding it's okay don't worry this is the day-to-day -day stuff right this is the good stuff if we want to look at this as a health routine, health regimen, this comes back to diet, right? Let's make sure that our mood isn't uh, getting our diet all out of whack sort of thing. Okay, now we've got tower reverse up in the sacral energy in our creative center. 
So what does this mean? This means maybe we're looking at certain um, certain passions, certain situations, certain, mm, I don't know what the word is, the, the je ne sais quoi of life, the, um, the experiences that we have built upon and that we are striving for. It's funny how our sacral chakra, so many people in society and what is imposed upon us and the message that is given to us by the establishment really subvert the subversive nomenclature goes on and brings us back to our sex drive everything we do getting in shape buying this shopping for that uh experiencing this uh they say that there will be like some subconsciously and subversively they give you a hint that there's going to be some sort of sexual reward at the end of everything that you buy or you purchase or you do and like this, the what those of us that have woken up or know that that's a load of bullshit right it's just like don't sell me a can of beer and uh you know um whatever it might be a pair of shoes and know that you know it's like gonna lead me to perpetual orgasm all day every day it's it's like it just doesn't work that way but the establishment will play on your mind like that so make sure as you're taking in the world around you you're properly discerning that it doesn't always come back to fulfillment through the sexual organs and we know this right but it's kind of like you may be involved with energies or maybe a younger crowd of people around you that are just caught up in these like ideas of like, well, let's throw a party or uh, let's have a, let's have a, I don't know, a parade or let's have, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Let's, let's all go do something that's going to allow us to feel like loose in the loins. And I'm not saying don't go out to the nightclub and get your Jimmy or your booty shake on out on the dance floor. It can be quite healthy to do that kind of stuff. And some of you may find that you are doing that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, remember that the answer is it always comes back to the higher chakras. We can only place a certain amount of uh, energy or we can only draw a certain amount of fulfillment from our sacral chakra in the form of sex before it turns into a more creative endeavor. So some of you may be adjusting your time schedules to say, okay, there's going to be a little less... Um, you know, uh, drinking and dancing, and there's going to be a little bit more writing and painting. Some of you might just be going through that kind of energy, I think is what I'm really driving at with that tower reverse. That was a bit long-winded for that. Let's look at some mundane clarifiers to see what we can get, how this might approach itself in a in a day-to-day -day life, right? Okay, so the one of swords, two of swords, knight of pentacles, seven of swords. Okay. So for this, some of you might be at situations where you're uh, having the talk with uh, adolescent children. This is what's come up. Some of you might be discussing the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees with your kids. Uh, there is no doubt about that in my mind. And it's kind of like you don't want to leave this up to the education system, but at the same time, you want to make sure it's balanced. You want to make sure what they're teaching your children about. I always see children in Knight of Pentacles because... It's the slow-moving energy that other readers see. Well, I question why is it slow-moving energy. And a lot of cases, it's because the thing that keeps you rooted at home and in community the most are your children, right? That's what, uh, you know, it's positive. It's moving through the elemental. It's moving through life on the earthly plane. That, to me, is children, right? Now, Ace of Swords and Two of Swords is new ideas, new understandings, and new decisions that have to be made. What are we blind to? What are we not seeing? If you have older adolescent teenagers, you may be checking in to make sure, are they sexually active? Are they, you know, in a situation where they're, they're, they're too shy or uh, ashamed to ask for advice at present time where you may just need to go out and forthrightly give it, all right? That is the mundane message for this tower card reverse up in, in this sacral chakra, right? Seven of swords, uh, we could apply this to a situation where it's like, yeah, don't be spending your money on, money on needless bogus BS because it's been marketed to you in a way that, uh, you know, gets you feeling a little bit randy. Okay. <laughs> randy. Sorry if your name's Randy. I like that word. Okay. 
Moving up into solar plexus, and look at this. We have more sort of this proverbial, not proverbial, I say proverbial a lot. Everything is a proverb to me right now. Everything is very zen. So excuse my uh, literally full pause uh, as I move through these mid-May readings. If you're checking out more than just one sign, I've been sounding like an anatomic robot with the word proverbial. So let's say the metaphorical energy of sex here, because we can see like that. There's more sexual energy coming through in this card now in your solar plexus area. But the Ace of Wands doesn't necessarily just mean that. It also means any endeavor that is new and that is creative, anything that is easy to manifest. And by manifesting, I don't mean like the sort of, the, you know, the mythological, like let's manifest. This is like create, manifest, create. So when we take a pen and paper and we start writing, we are manifesting, right? When we take a paintbrush to canvas and we start doodling, we are manifesting, right? We are creating anything that is new. And when the canvas is blank, when the block is uncarved or unwhittled, that is infinite potentiality, the blank canvas, right? The uncarved block, this is the infinite potentiality. So the, the new creation is always just a simple act, right? For some, like calligraphy could be like really big for somebody right now. I just got that feeling in my right hand. Um, and the Ace of Wands is saying, go with it. This is your gut instinct. This is moving this up from this energy. Let's, if we're, if we're done doing the bar star thing and we're still finding, well, where do we put this energy now? Where do we put these efforts in this time? Let's do it. Let's get the uncarved block and get out a big old Ace of Swords and start cutting into it and start making ourselves a cool something or let's you know uh write a verse to a song maybe we know somebody that creates music and then we can get together with them later or you write your poetry out so it's like all of those experiences that you learn through past relationships and learning and loving and loving it and you know fighting it and leaving it and reattaching yourself to it has brought you to this maybe very poetic state about your understanding in life and you're ready to just put it all down on paper that's awesome ace of wands energy up in solar plexus this reading has just actually taken a huge leap in regards to positivity that way right some of you may have just been looking for that simple simple shift in energy where do i put my passions right now these other things are not serving me anymore i'm tired of waking up hungover uh or doing the walk of shame in the morning and i just need something something else to put all my piscean creative energy and for a lot of you it's like money making stuff too this could be very profitable all right up here in the heart of hearts, we've got 10 of wands. All right, some of you may be balancing out your social life with study time too. This is going back to younger viewers. Again, a lot of young Pisceans tuning in, I feel, uh, where it's like you could be in college and you're ready to write some exams and lay down all these burdens of, of the things that you've learned and, and these courses that you're taking. They may just be adding up and it's getting close to like final exam time to put another year of schooling away pretty soon. And it's like you're about to, to release these things like one course load at a time or one particular activity at a time. Your brain, I feel, has been very busy, very active, and you're out taking these courses or doing these things and learning out in the world and applying your disciplines in different areas now where it might be new and exciting, but it also might be a little bit burdensome that you're feeling that the effect like, okay, the world can sometimes feel like it's closing in around us um, due to things like responsibility and the it's generational even, like what, you're, what the generation before you has kind of done or has set into motion. You're like, really? This is the kind of world I'm inheriting? Like, but my, my suggestion here is just don't worry about it. This is like, I don't, I'm not going to tell you to join the army, but that saying, the slogan, the be all that you can be, right? That's what you want to do at this point in time. If you want to join the army, you go ahead, you do whatever. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But be all that you can be. That goes through... Uh, everything in life, right? That'll give you the strength to take those last couple extra steps before you actually set uh, these sticks down, these clubs, these wands down, which are the wands are a reflection of your spirits, your passions, your your goals, you know, anything. It could be work related. It could be, you know, uh, dream based realities, things of that nature. Wands can be everything and anything. So whatever is giving you, leading to tension, leading to stress and anxiety, just know that you're going to have the strength to pull through it. And if it is absolutely bugging you, if it's a real thorn in your side, a real pain in the neck, just deal with things one at a time. 
linearly or analytically and don't get too emotionally attached to something that you may have to let go of, okay? Let's again ask for some more mundane clarifiers. Why 10 of wands? Why is 10 of wands up for Pisces in Heart of Hearts? Hmm? Why do Pisces have a 10 of... I don't want that many cards. I really don't. Normally what I do when I shuffle is I'll get the jumper or the popper out. But sometimes I'm left with like that, just the one that's left, in, and then that's the one I'll take, right? So we've got the moon. Okay, interesting. This, for a lot of readers, the moon is like the significant of Piscean energy, right? So some disillusionment. And that definitely, definitely comes back to three of wands and five of cups. I know I asked it to clarify the ten of wands, right? But overall, I feel that some of you guys are just stressed right out about something, right? You're feeling like, oh my goodness, how am I going to make it work? Am I have I gone too far too deep with somebody and now I can't turn around without maybe breaking a heart right that kind of energy or has uh, someone that I really care about I really loved but I like maybe you're not like in a relationship with them but you really care about them and you really love them and you sort of turned your back to them because you know uh, you know Johnny football player was on your doorstep is what is that energy is like oh what is that the um, Revenge of the Nerds, that TV show where the neighbor is across the hall and she's really beautiful, but the little guy with the glasses is like really trying to get in there and deep down she knows that she loves him, but she keeps going out with all of the jocks and all of the, the strong dudes and then there's like that energy where eventually she turns around and she faces the fact that, you know, the little nerd was the one all along that was like had her back and was actually strong enough to understand her and what she was going through even though she was out. So it's like this kind of disillusionment and maybe it's stressing you out. Maybe for status reasons you don't want to date the nerd and but, you know, your heart is kind of torn by that, right? And maybe you are have been lying to yourself to some degree as to what relationship and sexual satisfaction means to you, Pisces. Okay? I don't know. This reading is just taking on a life of its own. We're just going to go with it because, you know, we got to, right? Here we go. Justice. You want to talk about stuff that sometimes is beyond our control? You want to talk about stuff that sometimes gets us moving one direction when we really don't want to, when we really don't have to? Who doesn't like sitting around and enjoying a beautiful sunny day in the park when the police come along and say, hey, you got to move along. You can't be here. Nobody likes that, right? So justice up in communication, right? So let's be fair to ourselves. Let's talk to ourselves about the stuff that we want, the things that we're willing to accept and the things that we're really uh, we're doing out of superficiality, the things that are fair to the people around us. Are we hanging out with somebody for a short amount of time because they can get something that we want and then we ditch them and go do something else because, uh, you know, or is somebody doing that to you and you feel like maybe you need to cut them, cut that out of their life? It's not unfair. It's unfair to you. We're going to have to really watch through the end of May, Pisces, about any dharma or karma that is created out of... Uh, you know, false impressions that could be given through the spoken word, through listening, or through what we're doing uh, in terms of the people we're choosing to spend our time with. And I'm not sure where that's coming from. Speak fairly, speak authentically, speak with truth, speak with clarity, and also listen authentically. If somebody's trying to tell you something, but maybe you just don't give a lot of credit to that person because somebody's told you that that person isn't not worth listening to you might have to reevaluate that on your own agenda you might have been placing too much um too much uh what's the word i'm looking for not onus you guys have been placing too much importance perhaps into somebody's uh philanthropy or somebody's uh opinion on somebody else that has caused you to have a skewed view of somebody that you don't even really know that is actually could be important to you in your life path. My goodness, this is like, I'm not a channeler, but these are just like words that are coming in and then coming out. So I just, I don't know how that applies. So hopefully somebody on the receiving end can leave a comment and let me know what the heck that was all about. I just don't know. I'm going to seek a clarifier on an esoteric level why justice is up in the throat chakra. To me, it's easy to see, like, on a mundane level, that we're like, it's easy. Like, you have to speak the truth. You have to tell the truth. You can't sugarcoat shit. You can't lie to people. If you do, you're going to end up, you know, uh, with more. This energy will not clear if you end up, and that's in your heart. And you don't really want that, right? 
Yeah, I know I just said you'd have the strength to move through it. And the way you do it is by being honest, by speaking the truth. If you don't want to come back and hang out with immature friends anymore, you straight up tell them that that's the reason why. You don't sugarcoat that shit, right? Because you have the potential to help somebody. All right. Now, we've got the sun card up here. So yeah, you guys are probably just looking at embettering your lives. You guys are promoting your own happiness. You want to get into the gym, get into yoga and Pilates and get into uh, eating healthy and doing right by your body, doing right by your justice. Because the throat chakra is like spoken word, our listening and our speaking, but it is also the conduit for which we take in things into our body, some of which are not super healthy. And, you know, if it's tequila and, uh, you know, anything like that too much, it can, you know, we're not treating our body uh, with fairness, right? Or if it's too much pizza and cheeseburgers all day, every day, that's not fair to our body either. So if you want to start feeling good, you are the one that has to start directing the channel, which is the spoken word and, and what you're taking in and what is coming in and out of your mouth, right? A wise roommate of mine in college used to always just say, shut your mouth. And I would be like, that is perfect. That is exactly what needs to happen. And on that note, I will. I'll just be quieter a little bit. All right. Four of Pentacles reversed up in our uh, pineal gland area in our um, third eye chakra. So what could this mean? Four of Pentacles here. Um, is, are there self-esteem issues that you guys are working through? Are you holding on too tightly to an idea or a notion? Or are you really worried that you are wasting your time with something or somebody or some particular journey? Maybe you guys have been in this decision phase for quite a while now and you're like, I just don't know if I want to commit to that person, to that thing, to that journey, to that event. And it's now a couple moon phases have gone by and you're still in this deciding factor. And Pisces, that's okay. If it takes you, you know, forever in the day to decide about something that could really affect your life one way or the other, uh, then you go for it and you, you deal with it. You do it, right? That sort of situation. I also... Now I'm seeing this a little bit better with these cards kind of coming across the board. Some of you may be deciding that um, now is not the right time to have a child. And you might already be on your way to having said child. Like you might be pregnant and you might be considering not wanting to go that route. And that is your choice. That is your, and hopefully you're talking with the other partner that is involved here. But ultimately it is your choice, all right? Um, if you're a man watching this, uh, and your partner is a lady, the one that is carrying the child, I would be very, um, supportive at this time to any decision or any logical thinking that you guys will want to talk about while you're going through these types of energies. I just see it now with this reverse tower in, in sacral, right? And we picked up on children with that knight of pentacles. And now with this card where I see like, what are we clinging to? Have we, why are we taking so long to make this decision or, you know, are we just so, we can't move now until this decision is made. We can't go forward until this decision is made. It's going to be a very for a very few of you, but I felt the need to mention it. Um, we want to bring the scope of this card back out now again, and we want to say, okay, Four of Pentacles, maybe what we need to do is maybe we need to be investing in ourselves in certain ways where we're not wasting our time, okay? And spirit can show you that. Spirit can show you that. Maybe you want to just come in uh, to your sanctuary, like more like Four of Swords type energy and be like, all right, I'm not going to go out and blow 50 bucks or 100 bucks tonight on that comfort thing that I've always done because you know what? At the end of the day, sometimes that comfort thing doesn't turn out so well. I feel it at the Starbucks. I go in and I get the $4 latte and then the barista screws it up and I'm on my way back to my house in my car and I'm like, God damn it, they didn't put any vanilla in this thing. Why do I even bother spending my four bucks on this stupid cup of comfort, right? That kind of thing, which goes back to this marketing for pleasure type thing, cradle to grave advertising. The, those of us in the ascension process are going to be waking up out of those kind of things, all right? Okay, knife swords. Here's another. This is coming in in your crown chakra now. This is coming in. Some of you might be dealing with an air sign. This is Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra that you may be having these conversations with. You may be parting ways with, or you may be discussing the fact that uh, you know you're deciding to um, 
wanting to be more domestic. Maybe you're putting away your, your bar star lifestyle or your travel the world lifestyle. And now you're saying, I actually, I kind of want to settle down and I want to have a family. Are you with this? Are you going to be able to roll with this? Uh, and if not, we might have to reevaluate this relationship. Knight of Swords energy as well could be a younger air sign here. This could be your proverbial nerd. This could be the one that you're just like, oh man, why does this person have such a crush on me? Why is this person like relentlessly asking me out type thing? And do I really want them sort of thing, right? If we want to externalize that as a person, right? Um, if we want to internalize uh, Knight of Swords, it's just showing that nothing too much is going to be happening these next two weeks in regards to like, outside things coming in be steadfast study be prepared to uh make your decision it's so funny how much the hermit shows up in this crown chakra when i you know sometimes as a significant signifier sometimes as a clarifier right be your own talisman be your own guide through these next two weeks pisces if it feels right, chances are it is right. You guys are a water sign, so intuition is never far from, from you to use as a tool, right? A lot of this stuff, probably a lot of you didn't even really need me to tell you that. You just needed me to, like, re reaffirm because it's, like, what you're thinking, what you're going through. So with Three of Wands energy here, if you're making a decision, if you're going to go down a certain road, we need to make sure. And here it is, 46, the coming apart card right so yeah I, it had an overtone of breakup to this particular reading right and and to discussing with partners about what's going on and maybe you're a realigning boyfriend girlfriend or or them's their friends situations due to the fact that your tastes have changed or you're real reevaluating your own level of happiness and what you discern to be real versus what's superficial let's just read from the book though 46 coming apart I quote, now is the time to take separate paths, end quote. The coming apart card is a sign to put an end to what is no longer working for you. Has a commitment been broken? Perhaps you need to break a promise or change course because you took on more than you could handle. This is a perfect time to reassess your goals and values. Are your actions in alignment with what you believe in? Have you created a partnership that is not mutually beneficial? Separation, disillusion, and dispersion are all in focus at this time. If someone wishes to break away from you, don't chase the relationship out of a sense of fear. The price you'll pay will not be worth the prize. Separation brings good fortune, okay? Wow, did that ever just reaffirm this Three of Wands for me? Uh, for all the times I've pulled Three of Wands, it seems like you guys, this energy is hitting you uh, most heavily. Uh, and if there, you're finding like a lot of people around you are maybe coming to you for breakup advice maybe you have broken and it's just like a good friend coming to you be like i need to get out of this relationship what do you suggest i do maybe you can help them out in that type of situation and if this is you maybe you're finding a way just to have this conversation and set somebody down a little bit easily and get this like do it if you've been pondering it but you've been waiting on it maybe you're on like those little breaks that ross and diane used to take in that old tv show don't do that kind of crap be definitive in like what you know where you want to go it's just better healing and better forward momentum energy for everybody okay pisces like i said this reading had a life of its own it just went the way it wanted to go so um but know that i love you all and we'll see you next time okay